Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. I am finally doing a video on all of my Makeup Revolution palettes. All 23 of them will be mentioned in this video because at first I was going back and forth like do I just give a top five and a bottom five or what about all the things that are in the middle and then I thought no let's just take away all room for question and give every palette some sort of classification. So I've got like a best or favorites category, I've got sort of a middle average category, and then a worst category. Of course, these are my opinions, um, but I really wanted to wait until I was fully ready to shoot this video for you. I like to be really sure about what I say because I know people might spend money based on what I say. So I'm not going to spend too much time on any one palette, but I think I'm going to start with the ones that I like the least um, because I think that'll give you a little background as we get into the best ones and give you a little bit of like a frame of reference. Now the packaging on all of these palettes is remarkably similar. Most of them have like this kind of glossy black exterior, very simple. Um, I almost wish there would be a little more difference between them just for the ease of grabbing one and knowing what you're getting, but hey, that's okay. You're not paying a lot for these palettes, around $10 for a lot of them. So one palette I didn't like so much is this Ultra Professional Corrector Palette. So you've got all these like really pastel looking corrector shades. Honestly, I feel like I need, even though my skin tone isn't super dark or anything, I feel Feel like I need more depth and more pigmentation in these shades, more coverage in these shades to actually correct something. And I'm really looking at you, you know, you peachy shades over here because those really aren't able to do enough because they're so light on my skin. So if I put those over a dark circle, it just lightens my circle a little bit, but it doesn't erase it. Also, texture wise, I find these to be a little bit on the greasy side. Once they blend out, you know, very, very thin. So I was not impressed with that. And as you might expect, I wasn't really Really impressed with the Ultra uh, Cover and Concealer Palette, which I have in light medium. You know, you've got a variety of skin tone concealer type shades here, but it's a very similar texture to what I mentioned in the other palette. It kind of thins out so much that I don't feel like these shades maintain a lot of coverage. Now, maybe you don't need a lot of coverage, and you're thinking, well, for a light coverage and, you know, having a whole spectrum of shades, maybe that interests you. But for me, concealer wise, outside of that Tarte Wipeout Palette, I'm finding that a lot of, you know, massive concealer palettes aren't really doing it for me. And I'm more content to really hone in on one specific formula of a product that I really, really like and just go for that. Because I feel like I just have been disappointed by a lot of different concealer palettes that are out there. One Makeup Revolution blush palette that I really wouldn't recommend is this Blush Palette Queen. And this one does have the clear window. And I think I mentioned this in a haul video or something, how this is just a bunch of really shimmery blushes and there's not a whole lot of difference between them. You've got kind of lighter pinks, a little bit deeper pinks at times, and they're pretty to look at in the palette, but honestly, as far as color payoff on the cheeks, they all look really, really similar, so I feel like it doesn't really constitute having eight different shades. The general look that you get from this palette could have been accomplished by like two colors, I think. Now, a couple of eyeshadow palettes that I just could not really get into from Makeup Revolution are the two um, 32 color palettes that I tried. I think are even more 32 color palettes beyond what I've got here, but I have the Flawless 2, and it seemed like a really, you know, big range of neutrals, and these are small. I don't know, it seems like a little larger than the size of a dime, maybe, and I just felt like there was a lot of inconsistency with this palette. You know, I went toward deeper shades, these kind of rusty colors. I thought they did really nicely. Certain dark browns I was very impressed with, but some of these mid-tone mattes, which there are a lot of them, I just, I didn't quite see the need for so many, because because a lot of them were looking very sheer and very similar to one another. So I'm going to be talking about a lot of other eyeshadow palettes coming up, and I just found these. This is the one um, called Mermaids Forever. I found these 32 palettes to be more toward the bottom of my list. There were certain shades, like this kind of aqua green, where I'm like, whoa, that is just fantastic. And then I go to this metallic pink over here, and it's like it's barely showing up. So I wish there was just a little more consistency. Had there been more consistency, I'd probably be recommending this. Now I want to move into my average category. So these are palettes that I still think are usable. Some people might like them, but I'm not going to give them my fullest recommendation in this video. One of them is the All About Bronzed Palette, and I personally like this palette, but 
um, really trying to look critically at this and all the other things that I have, there are a lot of kind of similar shades happening in this palette, and I think a lot of people might get it and think, you know, what was the point of having the eight different colors? I did use a little bit of this today. I used like these two shades down here and this one that has a little bit of shimmer, and I like the way it warmed up my skin, but is it an absolute must-have? I'm kind of putting it more in my in-betweener category. As you will see, I have a lot of Makeup Revolution face-related palettes that I adore. So you got to draw the line somewhere. And this Golden Sugar 2 Rose Gold, like this palette as well, it's got two kind of interesting, very normal shades over here, and then a bunch of really highly shimmery shades. And I guess I'm just not finding myself reaching for this one very much. I've had it in my collection for a while, and it does have this wide variety of highlighter, glowy type shades, but as you will see as I continue on to the palettes I really liked, um, it's kind of similar to one that I liked, but I found to be even more versatile than this. So I just haven't been using that one a whole lot. Also, this blush palette, that's called the Blush Palette Melts. This is just a cream blush palette. Um, I didn't find there to be quite enough difference between all these shades. You know, you can see a little bit of a spectrum happening here. You know, you got some rosy shades, some pinks, but I feel like a lot of them come off really similarly by the time they're sheared out on your cheeks. And I do find the formula to be a little bit thin, a little bit on the greasy side. Whereas some cream blushes that I try, I feel like they're practically staining my cheeks. These I didn't feel like they had the best staying power. And two eyeshadow palettes that I'm putting in my average category are the um, Salvation Palette Iconic Pro 1 and 2. And these have kind of a matte finish on the outside, as you can see. And these are definitely Makeup Revolution's take on the Lorac Pro 1 and 2 palettes. And I guess my issue here is that I love my Lorac Pro 1 and 2 palettes. I think the formula, the texture of those shadows is just impeccable. They're all really, really consistent. You know, every shadow in those palettes seems to be of really good quality. And with these palettes, I just felt like something was missing. And I noticed just such a pronounced difference with the texture compared to Lorac. It's like they may have been able to duplicate the overall look of the palettes at a glance, but I think these are a long way off from being able to perform like the Lorac Pro 1 and 2 palettes. If I had to choose one of these as being better than the other, I think um, the Icon Pro 1 is a little bit better and more consistent than the Iconic Pro 2. This is the one I used today and I've been playing around with this and I just couldn't quite put my finger on what was happening, but I feel like because these shades aren't quite as pigmented as all of the shades in the Lorac Pro 2, um, that's why I'm getting a lot of muddy looks. Like the shadows aren't quite setting themselves apart from one another enough because they're just not as pigmented as those Lorac shadows were. Now let's jump into the palettes I really really liked. I'm going to go with eye palettes first, and one of them, which I know I talked about quite a bit recently, is this Neutrals versus Neutrals palette. Love the color selection in here. If you're looking for a Too Faced Sweet Peach alternative, I'm not going to say dupe because it's certainly not a dupe of that palette, but it does give you some kind of fun peachy pops, some um, warm shades to pair in there, a lot of interesting, really beautiful taupe type shades to mix in. I love the quality of this palette. Palette. I've used it perhaps more than almost any other Makeup Revolution eye palette that I have. I really love it. Next up, I want to talk about these palettes that are formatted like this. They've got um, a bunch of rectangular shadows and then some little circular matte shadows at the bottom. This one has some really pretty bright kind of teal blues, but my lovers of taupe zone in over here. These are gorgeous, and I think the quality in these is really consistent. I love that you're getting a, a really basic row of mattes, and it's like kind of a no-brainer as to what you can pair alongside some of these brighter shades. So this one's Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. This one's called Unicorns Unite. This one I think has a few more bright pops. It's got this kind of nice coppery shade in there, some pinks, a little more of like a purpley plummy vibe. I found these palettes to be super consistent really nice quality, some fun little pops, and you know, you're clearly getting a selection of matte and shimmer in each palette. So I think these are nice for a little something different to try. Then we get into this whole sector of palettes that dupe the naked palettes, and these are the Redemption eyeshadow palette, and they're called Iconic 1, 2, 3. These naked dupe type palettes 
I think run you a little bit cheaper than some of those other ones that I mentioned. I don't think everything in these palettes is a shade for shade dupe of everything in the Naked palettes, but can it give you a similar look? Absolutely. If the price tag of a Naked palette is holding you back from buying it, definitely look into these. If you've already bought a Naked palette and run out of it and it's like, I don't want to spend that money all over again, try one of these because I was really impressed with how nice quality these are. The Iconic One is going to be most similar to the Naked One palette. So you've got this range of the light shimmery shades um, where there are mattes in the Naked palette. Generally speaking, you've got mattes in these palettes as well. I am a big fan of Urban Decay's Naked One. That might be my favorite Naked palette. So I really like how they capture you know, some cool neutrals, getting into warmer neutrals. They didn't quite tackle the plummy shades exactly like the Naked palette did, but then toward the end of the palette, you're getting into some cooler, deep, smoky colors. So overall, I think this is an awesome deal. Here's the Redemption Eyeshadow Palette Iconic 2. Very, very similar to your Naked 2 palette with um, a lot of taupey colors, a lot of variations on taupe. You've got this really nice black at the end. I mean, totally workable, usable shades if you were trying to get a naked palette type look, you could definitely turn it out with that palette. And then here's the one that would be kind of like your equivalent to a naked three. Again, do I find every shade to be a perfectly accurate dupe? Not necessarily, but the overall package that's here, yes, I do think you can get some looks that are very similar to an Urban Decay naked three type look. And the quality across the board in these palettes seems really, really consistent. And I was surprised at how much better it seemed to be in these, um, naked dupe type palettes than even the ones that seem to be trying to dupe Lorac. Now they also have this palette that I got more recently um, that's called the Iconic Elements. And this one kind of makes me think of a combo of the Urban Decay Naked Basics 1 and 2. So a lot of super basic, super neutral matte shadows. Nothing goes incredibly warm, so especially if you enjoy the cooler matte shades, you might enjoy this. And I love the quality and I've done some really great looks with that. And then I'm not really sure what the story is with this Redemption eyeshadow palette Romantic Smoked. Um, maybe this is trying to dupe something I'm not aware of, but I really like this one too. Everything right there is matte and then everything over here has shimmer. And there's just some really interesting looks you could get. I think it's really cool that there's this pretty purpley kind of grayish purple shade in there. And if you're into the rosy burgundy shades, I think you'd enjoy that palette as well. But I gotta say across the board, great consistency, makeup revolution in those naked dupe palettes. And now we're moving on to the face related palettes that I would recommend from Makeup Revolution. And I kind of alluded to this earlier that there was a blush palette that was kind of in my so-so category because there's one kind of similar to it that I really, really recommend. And it's the blush palette Goddess. I love this because you do get versatility in your highlight shades, but you also get four distinctly different blush shades. And I think sometimes, you know, you get a full on highlighter palette and it's like, do I really need eight different shades here? You know, four different tones of highlight, four different tones of blush, one palette. Quality of the palette is excellent. I popped on a little bit of this peachy color along with another blush shade that I'm wearing, but I really love that. Now that's another one of these palettes with the clear window. And then there are some others that have have more of the standard black packaging and these are called ultra blush palettes and you've got two I'm gonna hold them up side by side you so you can really see the difference in tone ah, running out of air losing my voice <laughs> um, this one is called hot spice so warmer and then you've got cooler more pinky shades in the sugar and spice palette love them both great pigment um, you've got a mix of matte and kind of shimmery blushes and then two highly shimmery highlight type shades and it's the same story over here except this one is mostly matte. You've got like one kind of satiny finish shade in here with the sugar and spice. All of these others are matte and then some shimmery highlight colors. And I think the quality on these is just so good. I remembered reading some kind of online review not recommending the Hot Spice palette. And I'm so glad I went for it anyway because this one might even be, just in terms of the shade selection, um, this one I might like even more. But something I think you'll like about these palettes if you get them is how there are some nice pops of color among the blushes, but also some more like neutral muted blushes in both of these that I think are really easy to use and fun to try different looks, pair them together, and then you've got those shimmery pops as well. So without a 
doubt we are not at a loss for great blush options from Makeup Revolution, but also I must say this Ultra Contour Palette is one of the best contour palettes I have. Love these shades. So much use out of these, and I kind of feel like, you know, if it was between this and that All About Bronzed palette that I mentioned earlier, this is probably going to be the thing that I reach for because I feel like I do have kind of a bronzy color in here, but I've also got straight up perfect contouring shades. I've got matte shades right up in here that I can work with. This shade has just a little bit of sheen, and then some very highly shimmery, like go as big as you want to go with your highlight type shades over here on the side. So this is a phenomenal quality contouring palette. Definitely one of my top, top Makeup Revolution products that I've tried for sure. Last but not least, this palette kind of went against my better judgment, but I just can't deny how much I like it. Even if I want to put it in my average pile, it, I, I just like it too much. It's this palette called the Protection Palette Light Slash Medium. I have really enjoyed this. This is a nice little multitasking palette. It's got three creamy concealer shades in here, and I'm not really nuts about Makeup Revolution's concealer texture, but I find these all to be so light. I don't really use them on my face as concealers, but I use them more like a cream highlighting type thing, if that makes sense. So I'll go ahead and correct my under eyes and then maybe put one or two of these on this area just to brighten it up further. I don't really love that they're right side by side with powders, but at least they're right next to a light powder. <laughs> that makes it a little better, but I just kind of like using those from time to time. And then this face powder, just a straight up face powder, really creamy, matte, good coverage. And I love these three things happening over here. This contour slash bronzer, this blush, and this highlight. I'm wearing all of of these and like I said I mixed in more of a corally blush shade on top as well but these work so nicely very creamy very pigmented um, but yet you don't feel like you have to be too too careful with them I love this shade of blush but if you're into the multitasking if you're into the space saving kind of put a lot in one palette this is good so there you go guys big big video all about makeup revolution palettes everything I've tried was in this video um, as far as individual like makeup products from Makeup Revolution. I have tried some, but not tons, but that may turn out to be a separate video because here I felt like I had a full plate <laughs> in terms of palettes. So thank you for watching. I'm always interested to hear your opinions on these products in the comments section, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye!